Hey everybody, here I am in my car. I have just pulled up to the office where I'm about to do something I should have done about a month ago, which is rescue that forever goldie uh, Thuya plicata that I planted in spring in the container here because I love that plant. I really want it in the ground at my house. And really, we are really on the cusp of it being a little bit on the late side for evergreens to be getting into the ground. Uh, but I will be, what I will tell you this is it stands no chance of surviving in that pot. So I'm gonna get it home, get it planted, and uh, baby it a lot for the rest of this fall and cross our fingers on it a little bit. But anyways, let's go rescue that. All right, don't judge me too harshly on what's happening here because I went away uh, for about a week for a business trip followed by a personal trip and nobody watered anything while I was gone. And then I came back and I was really busy so I didn't water anything. So it's been about two weeks before I think since anything here has seen water. So um, it looks okay, but it doesn't look as good as it should. So just pretend you don't notice. But the Forever Goldie is looking great, I think. Um, it put definitely put on some growth and um, I am a fan of this plant. So let's get it out of here. Okay, I'm also trying to, I'm gonna save this Mullenbeckia too, probably, and try to grow this as a house plant, but the roots on that are kind of insane. Okay, so Dorothy will be your guide here as to where this is going. You can see the hole right behind her, which I've already dug. Um, so this is on the side of the driveway. And over here I have, this is all the neighbor's shed. Basically, right from where you see this line of um, greenery is the neighbor's property. So over here I've got some bottle brush buckeye growing. I've got actually four, three or four of them along here. That's a suckering shrub. So those will move out, eventually get quite big. I think it's gonna be kind of a while before that happens, to be perfectly honest. So it'd be nice to have some color here and some additional screening. So we're gonna pop it right here. All right, so I'm gonna put in some of the Organics Mechanics uh, biochar blend in this hole. I have been so happy with how this has helped in my garden, or at least how I think it's helped in my garden. So it pretty much goes in all the important planting holes for sure. Now, since that root ball was pretty dry, I have um, had it soaking for maybe 20 minutes just while I dug the hole and stuff in some root stimulator and just kind of rehydrating that root ball um, because it definitely was in need of some additional help. I was very happy when I dug this hole. It was really good soil for the first six inches and then we got into some of the sandy stuff, but that's better than what I find in a lot of places here. So I think that'll be really good. There's good soil in here. Now about the plant, I've already sort of covered this in the previous video, but so you don't have to go back to that. Um, this is from the Southern Living Plants collection. It's Thuja Placata uh, Forever Goldie, and it's, a, um, it's an arborvitae, but the Placata type of arborvitaes tend to be more deer resistant than the other ones. So we're gonna put that to the test here because this is, a, especially in this part of the property, this is a huge test to see just how deer resistant this is. Um, it's a really, I think, a really nice size. Uh, we're talking 10 to 12 feet tall, three to three and a half feet wide. And that's in, that's what's on the tag. And usually when you're looking at evergreens, those numbers are typically for like 10 to 15 years, probably. They keep growing. They don't stop at 12 feet. It's just that they have, that's sort of an indication of their growth rate. So the reason I planted it like four and a half feet back from the edge of the driveway is that we always have to be cognizant here about snow removal. Now we don't currently get our driveway plowed. We actually snow blow the whole thing. Um, we used to get it plowed, but now we snow blow it, which is fine. 
Um, but we might someday go back to snow plowing. And if you do that, you know how the snow builds up on the edge. And that's what we want to avoid. We don't want to like bury this thing in snow. So I think it'll be pretty good spacing once it reaches its final size, which again, it's going to be a while. But I think if we can get it happy, it'll be a really good little bright pop of color here. And again, the screening's always good. And I'd really like for this whole edge of the property here where these bottle brush buckeyes are and behind me here, this is a... Hang on, there's a tag, I'll tell you. That's a cranberry bush viburnum. There's, I think I planted five of them. There's basically only three left, but they've been here for a long time. And I don't think they're the most attractive thing in the world, to be perfectly honest, but they grow here. They're not fussy. They don't get eaten by deer. And um, again, it's a good screen right here. So that's why I kind of I have no problem with these plants. But ideally, I'd like for this whole edge of the property over here to become kind of almost like a mixed shrub border. Um, I like having this over here because you can see like right here, we keep our mulch pile. We almost always have one of these. These are the wood chips from trees we have taken down and we always keep a load of them because I can always use them. So it's kind of nice to have a spot to tuck that away. But um, I think it'd be great. I don't mind a little bit of grass here, but I think it'd be great to sort of develop this as kind of an interesting shrub border. Honestly, I'm just sort of waiting for some things to happen here because these bottle brush buckeyes will get huge and will, you know, really spread out. So I don't want to go planting a lot of things around them because they're going to take up a fair amount of space here. But once we get those a little bit more established, it would be really cool to have you know, just shrubs, just really easy maintenance, cool shrubs uh, in this area with a little gap to keep, you know, mater bulk materials when we need to. Check out this hose attachment I got. I've been absolutely loving this. Um, what I've been doing with it on the established trees is like sticking it in the ground and giving it like a little shot of water just to make sure that we're getting water down to the root zone. Cause it is kind of, you can see it's kind of pointy at the end. Um, but basically a lot of water comes out, um, which is really great. So I'm just settling in the soil one last time and then we're gonna mulch with some of those wood chips I just talked about. Okay, so there she is all tucked in for winter. Um, I've wanted one of these for a long time and I think this is a really good spot for it. Um, you know, I might be pushing it a little bit on the sun thing here. It's not gonna get as good of color as if it were in full blasting sun, but there is definitely enough to consider this full sun in this area, I think. Um, I'm not worried too much about exposure on this uh, because it's a fairly protected area. It's just going to be a matter of keeping up on this watering and that's going to mean that the hoses will be put away and I will still be watering this. I'll have to bring out the watering can and get over here and water this right up until the ground freezes. It's so important for evergreens because evergreens keep growing in winter. They, they're actively doing something um, unlike our deciduous trees which sort of go to sleep. So really important to keep up on your watering, but especially with your evergreens. All right, stay tuned for updates. You know how it goes, guys. We'll figure out if this worked or not. Um, but honestly, it looked pretty good in that pot all summer. It was, it's kind of a great twofer here if I can get it to grow in the garden. Oh wow, that's like right on it. Okay, well that'll work. Stay. Yeah. But take your picture. You want to be in the thumbnail? All right. <laughs>